Hello and welcome to another Acrylico tutorial on this animation. Please watch until the end for many tips and tricks you can use on your future projects. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Derivative as well as our patrons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification to support us into making more tutorials like this. For more tutorials and downloadable files, check out our Patreon. If you don't want to commit to the Patreon, you still have the chance to purchase our files on Gumroad. These include the Toei files, the Tox files, an HD and a 4K render, as well as a thumbnail. For the first 20 people to purchase any of the Gumroad files, there is 20% off. You just need to type a code as a discount code on the checkout. I'll leave all links in the description. Now on to today's tutorial. For this tutorial, we'll be using RayDK. We've done several other tutorials on this, so you can go check them out, or you can head on to the YouTube channel of Tect, who developed this toolkit and learn more about it. The link for the latest RayTK will be in the description. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and drag and drop it from the palette. If we zoom in here, we can see that we need to press Alt and R to open the RayTK palette. Let's pin it so it doesn't close every time we create a new operator. Great, now let's start by inserting the RayMarch render. The equivalent of this in Touch Designer would be the normal render. Then let's follow with a box SDF and connect this to the first input of the RayMarch render. SDFs are a chunk of data and mathematical formulas are applied to this data to calculate different 3D shapes. In the official documentation, the connection from SDF to RayMarch render is compared to a render top which takes in some geometry comp as an input and renders an image as an output. Then from here let's right click on the top output and attach an alt top. I'll just open a second screen and turn on the display flag. Before the null, I'll attach an RGB key to get a black background. Great, so there we have our box. Now we're only seeing the front face, so let's attach a rotate sop and connect the box to its first input and its output to the RayMarch render. And now we can actually rotate in the parameter window. Let's rotate a bit along the Y and a bit along the X axis. And the size of the box we can control directly from the box parameters. Now from here we're going to create three spheres to come out of three faces of the cube. Let's start with one and then we'll replicate the process for the rest of them. So let's create a sphere SDF from the palette. Then we need to combine these two shapes and we'll do this with a combine. This combine will do the same job of a composite. Let's plug the cube in the first input, the sphere in the second input and the output will connect to the rotate operator from before. We notice the sphere right now is way too big, so let's decrease the radius and then later we're going to translate it to come out of the face of the cube like so. In the combine we can change it into smooth union to have the shapes morph with each other more organically and we can go back and forth with the radius size until it fits better. Then we need to figure out two values for the translate. One when it's completely inside the box, this would be at zero. And one for when it comes out of the box at around 0 0.6. Then as soon as we have this range of motion, let's create a bit chop to drive the motion and then we'll follow up with the null chop. Let's set the multiply here to 3, so that we have 3 channels for the top side, the front side and the back side. For this motion we want to use a sine wave. To do this we're going to use a lookup with a pattern chop. Let's first create the pattern chop, then in the parameter window we go to the channel tab and we'll define the channel name to be the ramps and inside the square brackets we want all three channels we defined in the bit chop. Great, now we can insert the lookup chop and connect the pattern to its second input. Now the channel values here go from minus 1 to 1. To change these values let's attach a math chop after the lookup. In the parameter window, let's go to the range tab and we'll change from minus 1 to 1 to the range we defined before, which was 0 to 0 0.6. And now what we can do is we can go to the sphere, we put the null to viewer active, and we'll drag the first channel and drop it onto the translate y value of the sphere SDF as a chop reference. Now we have the sphere moving up and down. 
To change the speed of the movement, let's go back to the beat chop and increase the period to 10. Now, to replicate the process, let's copy-paste the sphere twice. We cannot recycle the combine here, so we also need to add a new combine for each new sphere. So, let's connect the second sphere to the second input of the combine, and in the first input we plug in the first combine, and then we repeat the same for the third sphere. Great, now as soon as we connect the last combine to the rotate, we will only see a big sphere coming out of the top face. And this happens because we still have all three spheres moving up to the range of motion we set before. So let's go to the second sphere and we'll delete this expression from the translate y value and paste it onto the translate x value. And inside the square brackets we'll have ramp 2 instead of ramp 1. All three ramps have different periods, causing the movement of the spheres to start at different times. Now let's repeat for the third sphere. We delete the expression from the y value, paste it on the x value with a minus, so that we'll get the sphere to move in the opposite side. And instead of ramp 1, we put ramp 3. Great, now that we got this, we can animate the rotation of the whole structure. In the parameter window, we'll animate the rotation along the y-axis with the expression adds time that seconds. I think it would also look better if we got rid of the rough edges of the square. So to do this, let's attach a round operator after the rotate and increase the amount value. Here you can go back and forth, changing the values of the uniform scale and the rounding amount until we're satisfied with the look. Now from here we can do some post-processing. We can change the color either with a basic material, which also lets us control the shadow, or we could also use an assign color operator. And that was it for today's tutorial. I hope you could learn something from this video and it inspires you to try things out yourself. Thank you for watching until the end. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye bye!